G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to War Thunder. I know, we don't necessarily do tanks. Roll the intro. But today, we're going to be driving the Panzer 4G. This is a Rank 3 premium Italian medium tank with a battle rating of 4.3 in arcade and 4.0 in realistic and sim. It's introduced recently in Equistrike and differs from the Panzer 4G by its longer gun and its curved radio antenna. And this thing is fascinating. It's a fantastic machine. I'm joined by Jeebus, and we just completed a live stream together. It was just fantastic fun, just bellowing out and having a bit of fun. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't get its camouflage, right? On all the previews of the streams and whatever, they showed off this beautiful Italian camouflage for it. But what has the premium vehicle got when you get it stocked? This ugly sand color. Which honestly should be repainted and, and replastered into this beautiful pizza uh, pasta looking vehicle. Now it does have a crew of six. This thing also gets smoke grenades. The visibility is 99%. The hull armor is 80 front, 30 sides, and back is 20. And the turret is 50, 30, uh, 30. So it's pretty interesting. Now we're heading towards cap on the Japanese map. I forget what this one's called. But then, nevertheless, there is already a target up, and we've got some things. There's a chaffy down here. We'll wait for him to come through. A, it doesn't look like he is going to. And we're going to put ourselves in a prime position on this map. Usually, a lot of more enemies go towards A, but unfortunately, that's not the case. We'll see that in a little bit. But uh, as you can see, this sort of hilly area just here is a great position to overview the whole entire sort of region where friendlies are coming now. There's one of those South African vehicles pulling up and, and firing a six pounder. Absolutely everything is entering the B point currently. And as you can see, it's quite an optimal position. You've got quite a lot of viewing angles from here. And you can see directly down towards the A point, which currently is being capped by a friendly at current time. Oh, hang on. There is a Panzer IV F2 pushing through the town there. Oh, straight through the Amirak. And obviously that's an ammunition explode. Goodbye Panzer IV, sending him straight back to the spawn point. I've spotted another vehicle there. It's a Chaffee, what, what looks to be. Yeah, that's definitely a Chaffee, all right. So can we fluke the shot? We did. We got a critical hit on him. Knocked out his fuel tank, knocked out his engine. He'll be stuck there repairing for a while. Just pulling back, just in case I receive any form of fire. Because, again, this machine, even though it has the side skirts on the turret, it doesn't have necessarily the sides on the hull, so getting extra shells in towards you on a flat Panzer IV is not necessarily a good idea. Now, Jeebus is lucky he kills off that M24, and we're going to push up. Now, in the meantime, I'd like to say that as a pilot first, I much enjoy flying aircraft. I've only got three remaining airframes left to unlock. F-100 and the two F-4s that come after that in the American tech tree. I got given some golden birds uh, from the Garjong team and I decided to spend them on unlocking the remainder of the Chinese tech tree and a couple of other obscure aircraft I didn't have. Speaking of which, goodbye M24 that was sitting in the cat point. I'm going to push up here and we'll continue our discussion in just a second. But this hill is also a critical point here because you can see directly towards B, which is the second cat point, and you can also overlook A as well. But not to rest, rest on our laurels, for nothing is there. There is a Sherman to a delete left there, who he doesn't necessarily see us, but he's starting to reverse. It's a little too late, mate, because we put one straight through the ammunition, and he goes up sky high. What a pretty animation. I just love this machine so much. The KWK-40, uh, the 75mm gun that this thing comes with, is utterly fantastic. That being said, though, you know, you've still got a turret rotation of 8.3 seconds, and you can upgrade that uh, with to, to 9.8 seconds, and then there's a full uh, upgraded turret rotation with 11.9, and you can even get, with an expert crew, up to 13, and ace, you can get 14 seconds. The reload rate went, goes from 7.6 seconds down to 5.9 seconds when you can fully upgrade this particular machine. And I don't have my crew experted yet, but they are uh, getting there on the levels. Also, I should mention, Panzer Granada 39. You've also got the Heat, the German version of the Heat, and Panzer Granada 40, or 40. Uh, there is the high explosive, Fierandreisi, but 
a high explosive is, you know, limited to very, very, you know, limited to, to sort of like light targets, essentially. But moving on, we've just returned from the AFK realm. Essentially, this thing is better than its predecessors, and that being its German predecessors. 80mm uh, thick front turret hull, Capola with 95mm, uh, great gun depression, uh, no need to expose the hull when shooting over hills. Case in point, and just up here there's an M10 that Jeebus is shooting at. Ready, and blam. So, pull back, goodbye M10. Start the reload process, and then we go again. Now it's got a decent ammo capacity, and it also has decent mobility. Unfortunately, it's got narrow tracks and it's quite heavy. Uh, poor cross-country performance, and in soft terrain, this thing doesn't necessarily do too well. It doesn't quite have the grunt to get moving, but it has enough oomph to get where you need it to. And right now, we're in the, entering the later stages of the particular mission. Jeebus here is looking at something. There's a couple of tanks directly to our front here. What have we got here? There's a Stug. Oh, not anymore, there isn't a Stug. Pull back, wait for the reload. There is another vehicle directly behind him. Jeebus takes him out. There's the M4A1. That is basically the whole entire flank secured, at least at this point in time. I don't know why I'm reversing up just a little bit. Probably because I don't know what is going to happen. But that's okay. We're going to push forward, and we're going to hold this ridge line just here. And sort of just hang roughly around where Jeebus is right now. Hopefully, me and him can stay alive and uh, can do some good the world some good. Now, I dunked my shot. Had I not necessarily aimed properly, Jeebus wouldn't have died to the Sherman there. Next shot's going to come through and absolutely nail him. Unfortunately, Jeebus is now dead. But that's okay. We're on our Avenger, and we get six kills at this point in time. And this vehicle is all about your positioning. You know, it can be utilized as both a sniper and a brawler. It's got a great gun. However, I would caution that situational awareness is to be maintained at all costs. Because the well, the frame itself isn't exactly, you know, armored at all. There's no side skirts. There's no way of protecting yourself. Though I did have a match in this thing where a KV-2 bounced off the direct flat side of me. I don't know how that was possible. Probably Gaussian physics at play there. But I've had immense fun playing this machine. I don't know what it is about it. Obviously, the, 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 the tank gun itself is, is fantastic. But rip the M10 sitting in the French uh, tech tree there. Poor French boy. And there is an anti-air as well. We're going to get him straight through the center. Goodbye, M16. And essentially, we're going to hold this particular point right here. This is the first time I've had eight kills in a long while. I don't necessarily do this well in Grand Forces. Again, situational awareness is key. I mentioned that earlier. Two M10s come out into the wilderness. Now, had I let these guys go, they would have wrecked havoc on the center of the team. But we can't have them let have, uh, you know, can't let them have fun either. So, two ammo racks, two targets destroyed. Goodbye, M10. That is the 10th kill. What is there to say about this vehicle that isn't unique? It's a great brawler, it's decent at medium to long ranges, it's perfect for the average kind of medium and mediocre sort of engagements. Granted its armour is absolutely piss poor, but you get this thing in a hull down position and a very strong central location, pr protecting like a flank or two, and you have yourself a contender. As long as your team is capping the points and as long as you're not being overwhelmed by T-34s, rest in pepperonis, Panzer IV J then there is no real reason why I don't recommend this vehicle. Also, the research rate is pretty good. The repair cost is pretty low. You know, as a premium vehicle goes, this is pretty well balanced. I'd say that chances are high that more people will probably pick this up. It's almost better. In fact, I'd say it's better than the M4 hybrid that you can also get at the same sort of level. And that really says something. I mean, it's all about the gun, really. The armor is mediocre. You know, smoke charges are nice. It's got a hard-hitting stock round with explosive filler. That is always a bonus. I'll take that over anything. You know, obviously the armor is thin, and the crew compartment layout means, you know, a successful penetration will basically knock out all your crew, which can be an issue, considering there is no extra protection, but it doesn't really matter. For what it's worth, this patch has been utterly fantastic. There are a few outliners, with the F5 being particularly broken, and the... Obviously, <laughs> the beautiful aircraft that I tested the other day, the American one, I've forgotten the name of it now, uh, the F-8, <laughs> that thing, the last gunfighter, is quite something else. It's incredibly useless in War Thunder, I I'd say, 
missiles are great but this patch hasn't really de developed or at least provided something that was completely and utterly broken and I, I quite like that I like the serenity of just mumbling away just enjoying the content rather than having to play meta all the time and this thing you know Germany 4.0 Italian 4.0 it's a fantastic battle rating to start experimenting with tanks it's not too high up there where you're fighting thermals or you're fighting sort of 6.7 and 7.0 tanks you know it's a great sort of learning experience and just a little bit of relaxing fun I suppose now we've climbed down the hill and we're entering the A point hopefully we can capture it in time drain the tickets even further and then that will basically be good game from here on out. I really don't think there is anything else to say about this particular vehicle or this particular patch in general. I will do a video following up what I think about this current patch. I think this one is particularly interesting. So let me know in the comments down below what you are interested in. What are you enjoying whilst playing the new patch? And if you've come into any issues, any sound issues, any graphical issues, just, just anything in general and whether you think that impacts the game negatively or positively uh, during the this update, which I think is a great start towards this year. Anyway, Survivor and a whole heap of other medals you can see there. One capture zone, 11 kills. Not quite enough to bring out a nuke in ground forces, hey? <laughs> Not that you can get it at this tier anyway. But there you go. A decent set of rewards and a fantastic low tier, fun and engaging, which is rare to say for War Thunder match. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of Equus Strike down in the comments down below. And more importantly, thank you to everyone who supports the channel recently. It's been fantastic fun to see the comments roll in. And I guess we'll see you in the next one for some more aircraft stuff. Anyway, I'm Ash. Catch you next time. Bye bye.